Hi, I'm Dr. Steve Warner, SAT Math Guru and Associate Professor of Mathematics. I've been tutoring SAT Math for the last 12 years and have helped over a thousand students with their performance, many getting a perfect 800 or near perfect score. In this video, I would like to discuss the math formulas that I recommend you memorize for the SAT. These formulas are essential, especially if you wish to get a score of 800. Let's begin with the formulas that are given to you at the beginning of every math section. Memorize these. There are only a few and they are very simple. If you happen to forget a specific formula on test day, it will still be there for you, but it's better to not waste time flipping to the beginning of the section every time you need one of these formulas. This can eat away valuable time. You should memorize this simple formula for percent change. Note that this formula works both for problems involving percent increase and problems involving percent decrease. Strategy 12 in my book, The 32 Most Effective SAT Math Strategies, gives examples illustrating how to apply this formula effectively. This simple formula for changing averages to sums is very important on the SAT. It can often be used to save a lot of time on statistics questions of all difficulty levels. Strategy 20 in my book provides more details. Next, you should know the following formula to compute the slope of a line when you are given two points. Here, x1, y1 and x2, y2 are any two points on the line, and m stands for slope. The slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Note that the y-coordinates are subtracted first in the numerator. A common error is to subtract the x-coordinates first. In addition, you should know the slope-intercept form of an equation of a line, y equals mx plus b. Here, as usual, m is the slope of the line, and b is the y-coordinate of the y-intercept of the line. This is where the line hits the y-axis. As a special case of this, note that a horizontal line has an equation of the form y equals b. You should also know that a vertical line has an equation of the form x equals a. One last thing you should memorize about lines. Make sure you know that parallel lines have the same slope, and perpendicular lines have slopes that are negative reciprocals of each other. See strategy 28 in the 32 most effective SAT math strategies for several SAT problems that use these formulas. Now on to triangles. The triangle rule states that the third side of a triangle is between the difference and sum of the other two sides. This is a very simple rule which is often not taught in the classroom. Triangle rule problems tend to be level 4 or 5 even though they are usually quite easy. I attribute this to the fact that many students simply have never learned this rule. See strategy 25 in the book for some examples. This formula sometimes comes in handy when dealing with sets. If you have a set with x objects and another set with y objects, then the total number of objects is x plus y minus both plus neither. Many students get confused when counting the number of consecutive integers in a list. The number of integers from a to b, inclusive, is b minus a plus 1. For example, the number of integers from 2 to 7 is 7 minus 2 plus 1 equals 6, and the number of integers from 57 to 160 is 160 minus 57 plus 1 equals 104. One last formula that every student should know, distance equals rate times time. For many students, that should be sufficient. But for those of you that really want to score an 800, I would like to give you a few more. In addition to the simple formula, distance equals rate times time, the more advanced student might want to memorize the following rate formula. Average speed equals 2 times speed 1 times speed 2 over speed 1 plus speed 2. This is known as the harmonic mean formula, and it can be used to find the average speed when two individual speeds for the same distance are known. See the first bonus strategy at the end of my book for more information. Note that applying this formula will save a lot of time if you happen to get this type of question on your SAT. The advanced student may also want to know the generalized Pythagorean theorem. d squared equals a squared plus b squared plus c squared. This simple formula is used to find the long diagonal of a rectangular solid. It makes a difficult geometry question easy to solve. This type of problem occasionally pops up on an SAT, but if you want to guarantee yourself an 800, you'd better be prepared for it. Now we're getting into some real technical stuff. 
But once learned, the formulas I'm about to show can become second nature to you in a matter of moments. The general form for a quadratic function is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. The graph of this function is a parabola whose vertex has x-coordinate negative b over 2a. The parabola opens upwards if a is greater than 0 and downwards if a is less than 0. Finally, the standard form for a quadratic function is y minus k equals a times x minus h squared. The graph is a parabola with vertex at hk. Again, the parabola opens upwards if a is greater than 0 and downwards if a is less than 0. And here is one last formula for you. The total number of degrees in the interior of an n-sided polygon is n minus 2 times 180. For example, a six-sided polygon, or hexagon, has 6 minus 2 times 180 equals 720 degrees in its interior. In other words, the interior angles of a hexagon all add up to 720 degrees. There are not that many formulas to memorize, and many of them you probably already know. So make it a point to commit the rest of them to memory over the next few days. Then you can focus on practicing SAT problems and applying the strategies found in my book, The 32 Most Effective SAT Math Strategies. Good luck. For more information on how you can get an 800 in SAT Math, or to have specific questions answered by me personally, please click on the link below.